Hello, friends. I want to say welcome to Vernonia Church and our online teaching time. My name is Sam. I'm the pastor here at Vernonia Church, and I'm so glad that you're here today as we're going to begin a brand new teaching series called The Overflowing Life. In just a few moments, I'm going to share with you a teaching about an overflowing connection, and it's going to be a great day. Hey, before we do anything, I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you that God will help you, that God will help you have this amazing connection connection to him in your life and it will make your life so much better. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, I just pray for those who are joining us here today. I pray that you will bless this teaching time where we dive in and we think about how God you want to bless us, how you want to bring a, a river of blessing into our life, how you want to fill our lives up and, and and not only just fill them up but fill them up to overflowing with your presence, with a connection with you. And God, I pray for each one who's here that you will encourage, that you will bless, that you will lift them up, and that you will help each of us to learn how to live the overflowing life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said together, amen. Well, let's dive into our teaching. The and the overflowing life, first off, God is absolutely crazy about you. He wants you to live this overflowing life. We're going to talk about what that means as we go through this series together. Uh, he wants to fill your life up so much with his presence, with his blessings, that your life will become an overflowing life. Uh, King David said this, the Lord fills my cup to overflowing. For David, his life was his cup and, and God was pouring himself into it. And David just says, man, you fill me up so much that, that it's like I'm, I'm overflowing. Uh, your life, your life is a cup. Now, I, I just want you to, to say this with me out loud. Uh, you ready? I'm, I'm going to share with you what I want you to say, and then you say it out loud. Uh, my life is a cup, and God wants to fill it up. That, that, that's the truth that David shares with us. He says, God is, is filling my life up. He's filling my cup up till it overflows. And your life is a cup. And God just wants to fill it up. In Psalm 23, 5 is where David says it. He says this, God, you prepare a feast for me in, my, in the presence of my enemies. And you honor me by anointing my head with oil. And my cup, my life, overflows with blessings. God wants to fill your life up. And, and he wants to fill it up to overflowing. So how come sometimes in life we don't feel like we're being filled with overflowing? How come sometimes in life uh, we can start to live in such a way that we're filled with worry, anxiety, fear? Uh, we're, we're, we're filled with, with an overwhelming sense of life. Have you ever been there? Have you ever had a time where you were just overwhelmed? You, you, you didn't feel like you were overflowing. You felt like you were empty and you had a shortage. A lot of people today live live without having an overflowing life. Even some of us who follow Jesus, we can have times in our life where we're not living the overflowing life. We can be uh, living in a different way, living as if we don't have enough, that, uh, as if we don't, uh, we never have enough. Uh, we can find that we never have enough time. Uh, it just feels like all the time goes away and and our, our calendars can get overbooked and we don't have enough. We can feel like we don't have enough money and the bills are piling up the debts piling up and and often we don't have enough money because we overspent what we had uh, we can feel like we can never get out of debt we'll we'll always be in debt because we've uh, spent too much we've spent more than we earned and and our accounts get overdrawn and and we end up with credit and we can feel like we never have enough emotions we always feel emotionally empty or drained 
strained or behind uh, and, and we're overloaded with stress. We can feel like we don't have enough energy. Sometimes we can live in such a way that, uh, well, we've, we've done too much in a day and we continue to do too much in a day and we, we just don't have energy and we, we can feel like uh, we just don't measure up to the people around us or to the expectations that are on us because we're, we, we're overvaluing the, the expectations and the approval of other people. And often it's that way because we're trying to keep up with everyone around us. We're trying to keep up with appearances. We're trying to keep up with a lifestyle. We're trying to keep up with with something that someone else has. And as a result, we find ourselves stressed out. Uh, we can find ourselves not living the overflowing life, but an overstressed life. And, and and we might have anxiety. And we can instead of living the the overflowing life, we're we're living an overly anxious life. And and, and we can find ourselves fear, feeling inferior. And instead of feeling like we're God God fills our cup and it's overflowing uh, we feel like we just don't have enough of ourselves that we can't be enough can't do enough and can't get enough approval uh, you don't want to miss out on someone's love you, you don't want to miss out on someone's approval and you don't want to be left out and 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 so we end up we end up with a life that's not overflowing we end up with a life that's filled with stress, anxiety, and fear. Can you ever, can you relate? Have you ever had a time where that described you? Has that ever been you? Uh, and in this series, we're going to talk about making a change in our life to where instead of being overstressed, overworked, and never having enough, uh, to living a life that's, well, that's overflowing. We want to leave the one life behind and take a hold of the life that God wants to give us. And, and so I want to begin this series by talking about how God wants us to understand and know and experience a, an overflowing connection. Because it all starts, living the overflowing life, it all starts with having an incredible connection to God and an incredible connection through Jesus Christ. And that's what allows us to live the overflowing life. The overflowing life is is a life filled with an overflowing spirit. Uh, the, the, the overflowing life is a, a life filled with an overflowing relationship with Jesus and, and, and an overflowing connection to God. And out of that relationship, my life can become overflowing. And so what I want to do is I want to sort of build the base for this series by talking about this overflowing connection God wants us to have. And, and as we talk about this overflowing connection, we're going to see, and, and we're going to we're we're going to we're going to go from the cross because the overflowing connection begins at the cross with a faith a belief with a connection to Jesus Christ god gave his life for us to forgive us to take away what we were lacking the goodness we were lacking to take the punishment and the and to offer the forgiveness for the for the failures we had and for the times that we missed the mark. And at the cross, Jesus takes those things. And at the cross, Jesus offers us a new life. He offers us grace and forgiveness, a hope and an eternal life. And he offers us his goodness. And he offers us the, the blessings of heaven, so many blessings that we could never count them. And, and what I want to do is I want to I want to go from the cross and, and our belief in Jesus and our connection to Jesus that gives us that that chance to experience a new life. And I just want to move into how do we understand the new life that that connection gives us? And so I want to share with you some, some things that God really wants us to believe as we experience this connection with Jesus through our belief in him. Number one, God wants me to believe that he wants to give me an abundant life. 
God wants to give you an abundant life. He wants to give you a life that's filled with abundance, a life that's that's filled with Him that is a, a an abundant life. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God really wants to give you a, an abundant life, that God really loves you as His child, that He's a good God, that He's a compassionate God, that He's a gracious God who is your Heavenly Father? If you believe in Jesus, you become a child of God, and He wants to give His children good gifts. And along and, and among those gifts that He wants to give you, He wants to give you not only all that you need, but He wants to give you an abundance. In, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Jesus would teach us that if we have a connection with God through Christ, and if we, we put his kingdom first in our life, he'll meet our needs. In, in Matthew 6, 33, it says this, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. All the things that the world feels like they're lacking, and the world is running around and worrying and caring and, and, and living an overwhelmed life to get. If you would put God first in your connection to him first in your life, he will provide you what you need but on top of that he not only wants to give you what you need but he wants to give you an abundance and there seems to be uh, two approaches we could take in life when it comes to understanding the abundance of god uh, some people take uh, one approach and and instead of an abundance mindset uh, they have what we might call an absence mindset an absent mindset says, uh, what I need is always absent and always will be. Well, what I need is always missing from my life. And, and you can have an absence mindset, by the way, whether you're rich or poor, whether you have a lot, whether you have a little, it really doesn't matter how much you have. Uh, there are very wealthy people and powerful people who live with an absence mindset. And, and the absence mindset says this, uh, well, I, I I don't have enough time. Time is absent, and uh, money is absent. I, I don't have enough money. I haven't reached the the bank account dollar amount that, that I want or that I feel like I need. Uh, energy is absent. I, I don't have enough energy to do all the things I want to do. Connections are absent. I, I I don't have the right people in my life and the right connections to be to to be to be filled up or to to, to do what what I need to do. Not enough people love me. Not enough people care about me. Not enough people pay attention to me. Not enough people are praying for me. Not enough people are clicking like on my posts. Not enough people are responding to me. Uh, connections are are absent and and chances are, and opportunities are are absent everybody else gets those chances and opportunities but i don't get any and and i don't get enough of them and and i'll never get a break and and, and things like luck or or things like knowledge or understanding or, or or education or abilities or talents they're absent i don't have enough of any of them and and there's this feeling that i i i never have enough that that I'm always falling short that I'm always behind that that I'm always missing out and and I fall into this mindset that that's always thinking about me and mine and what I can achieve and what I don't have I look at everything that's absent in my life and and I'm always looking at what I don't have and and when I look at what I don't have, I'm always seeing that something is missing. I, re I remember a time where I was talking with one of the uh, pastors that I worked with, and and, and I, I was I was kind of working with him in an absence mindset. Uh, I was always thinking about how I couldn't do the ministry I wanted to do because I didn't have what I what I thought I needed to do it. And I was always 
complaining. I was always stressed out. I was always frustrated that I didn't have the resources I needed or the opportunities I needed or the or, or the, the help that I needed. And I was always talking about what I didn't have. And I, I, I remember that pastor, he said to me, uh, Sam, instead of thinking about what you don't have, why don't you look at what God has given you and work with that instead I, I i was i was i was trying to do ministry with an absence mindset and, and when the bible talks about people who have an absence mindset it, it will describe the people as always wanting and always lacking it will describe the people as always needing and 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 never having enough and that causes my life to be filled with extra stress anxiety and a sense of being overwhelmed have you ever been there i, I just feel so overwhelmed i i just feel like i'm always behind I, I i'm in a hole i can't climb out of and and along with this mindset comes this tendency to always be comparing I'm always comparing what I don't have to what you have. I, I'm always comparing what I don't have to what other people have, what, what I'm not doing to what other people are doing. And in the world of, of, of social media, the absence mindset is powerful. In the world of, of social media right now, today it is creating extra anxiety and stress and and it's creating an extra level of of loneliness as as you go online and you see what all these people are posting the fun they're having the good things they're doing and and the connections that they're making and the food that they're eating and, and you start to compare and you kind of have this situation where you are comparing what what you don't have to what they have you might be liking but there's a sense of there's a sense of stress and and an overwhelming pressure that you're not measuring up because you're comparing who you are to what everybody else is posting and usually it's a facade and we all know that but we still feel that emotional stress from it it can leave you feeling resentful. It can leave you feeling bitter. It can leave you feel like you're missing out. And, and we get insecure and we compare and, and we compare ourselves to, to others. And we feel like others have what we need. And we get envious. We get critical. We get jealous. And we have this absence mindset that causes it all. But God wants us to not have an absence mindset, but an abundance mindset. And, and they really are two opposites. And, and, and I think we have this natural tendency to slip into the absence mindset. But when we are connected to God and when we're connected through Jesus Christ and our faith in Him, God says, I want to give you an abundant life. I want you to learn what it means to live with an abundance mindset. He's the creator of all things, and, and he's the maker of heaven and, and earth, and he has all things. Uh, the, the cattle on a thousand hills are his. All the earth is his. All the wealth in the world is his. And, and, and there's nothing that, that he doesn't own that he can't handle that he doesn't have and he can just create anything that he needs he's god and his resources his well never run dry when it talks about in the bible people who live with an abundance mindset it will use words like abundance that god provides us with an abundance of of blessing it'll talk about people who understand that that god has brought uh, plenty into their life and 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 it will use words like plentiful or abounding or bountiful when it talks about his blessings the bible will teach us that God will supply us with all that we need and more. He wants to give us 
and abundance. And when you're connected to him through Jesus Christ, he gives us not only all we need, but he fills our cup to overflowing. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it says this, By his divine power. Now, now we have to almost stop there for a moment and understand that he has all divine power. He is God. <laughs> so, so when God uses his divine power, you can, you can trust it. You can bank on it. It says, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all this by coming to know him, the one who has called him to himself by his means of his marvelous glory and his excellence. So God says, hey, come to me and I will give you everything you need to live the godly life that I planned for you. And when we have an abundance mindset, we don't feel like we need to compare let me give you an example. I not long ago heard a preacher use an example like this. Uh, when was the last time you compared how much air the people around you are breathing? <laughs> when was the last time that you were worried that the person next to you was breathing your air? Uh, you you got concerned that you know with every breath they, they might be stealing what you need uh, you 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 never ever <laughs> compare like that do you and why well because god created enough air for all of us and when was the last time you were at the beach and you got really concerned that all the people enjoying the sun were stealing your sun rays. Uh, you, you, were, you, you were getting frustrated and bitter and jealous because that person over there was soaking in the sun that belonged to you. You should have had it. Uh, they're getting an abundance. You're worried about it. Uh, but, but you don't do that, do you? You don't do either one. Why? Because God has provided enough air for all of us. And there's enough sun rays for all of us. Uh, when when the sun's out, we're here in Oregon, so uh, so I should have used another example. When were you ever worried that the rain, you know, someone getting rained on was stealing your rain? I guess that one's not very good. But but the idea, you get it, right? That God has an abundance. He has created all things, and and He's created enough for us. And and there's no reason that we would worry about other people getting what God has given when we have an abundance. In its mindset, we understand that God has plenty for you and God has plenty for me. And instead of focusing on what you're getting and instead of focusing on my absence of what you have, I focus on what God can give and I focus on the abundance that God has given. God's resources are never ending. I, I don't focus on my resources when I have an abundance mindset. I know instead that I'm connected to God and that God will give me out of his resources. I, I focus on God's abundance. Uh, he, he has unlimited love for you. He has unlimited joy he wants to give you. He has unlimited peace he wants to give you. He has unlimited blessings he wants to fill your life up to overflow flowing with. Now we could see both these mindsets in a story from the Old Testament. A prophet named Elijah was preaching, uh, sorry, Elisha <coughs> was preaching and teaching during days where the, the kingdom of Israel was in a famine. Uh, people didn't have enough food, and there was hardly any food in the land, and people were hungry while he would preach. And, and they're in the middle of this famine, and someone scrounges up some bread, brings it to Elisha, and Here's what it says in 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 42 to 44 it says a man bringing or, or sorry a man came uh, bringing the man of God Elisha 20 loaves of barley bread baked from the first ripe grain along with some heads of new grain 
And Elisha says to them, give it to the people to eat. They're all hungry. There were, uh, there were hundreds of them who had come, and he wanted them to be able to eat. So he says, give it to the people to eat. Now, Elisha's servant said, how can I set this, <laughs> these, these 20 loaves of bread, in front of a hundred men? His servant asked. Uh, you, there, there's an absence mindset. He's looking at what's lacking rather than what God can do. But Elisha answered, Give it to the people to eat, for this is what the Lord said. They will eat and have some left over. Now that's the abundance mindset. Elisha knew what God could do. His, his resources were unending. He could turn 24 loaves into enough food for 100 men to eat and have some left over. And then he set it down before them, it says, and they ate and had some left over according to what the word of the Lord said. Do you have, which one of these do you have a tendency to fall into? Do you have a tendency to fall into an absence mindset or an abundance mindset? Well, God wants us to learn to live connected with him and, and experience an abundant life. In fact, Jesus himself would say that one of the reasons he wants you to be connected to him, one of the reasons that he came to to live and die on a cross and raise from the dead so that you would believe him. One of the reasons he did that was so that you could experience an abundant life. In John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says this, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I came that those who follow me might have life and have it abundantly. Now the thief wants you to have an absence mindset. The thief wants to steal your abundant life. The thief wants to steal your joy in life. The thief wants to, to kill your spirit and your soul and make you always feel like you're wanting and never have enough. The thief wants you to grumble. He wants you to complain. He wants you to always think about what you don't have and compare yourself to what others do have. The thief wants you to see and focus on what's missing in your life and to focus on what you don't have. The thief wants you to have an absence mindset. But Jesus said, I came to give my followers an abundant life, a life that's full and overflowing. King David said, my, my cup is filled up and overflowing with God's blessings. Not only does God give him what he needs, but God gives him uh, so much that he fills his cup up and he can't, he gives him so much that he can't hold on to it all. God blesses me so much I can't keep it contained, he says. The blessings just run over and overflow, and, and God blesses me so much that I'm overflowing. And when I'm connected to God through Jesus, I should start to believe that God wants me to live an abundant life. I, I need to start to believe that God wants me to focus on my connection to Him and the abundance that He gives and what God can do. Now, I want to be careful here. We don't, we're not talking here about how God wants you to be rich, how God wants you to be, uh, be uh, driving around in, in the fanciest car, the fanciest truck, wants you to have the biggest house and all the good toys. That's not what we're saying. God wants you to learn how to live with an abundance mindset, whether you have little or have a lot. You realize that God has all that I need and, and he blesses me. God gives all that I need and, and he blesses me and he will take care of me. And sometimes that abundance is not material. Sometimes that abundance is just in his blessings and learning learning to focus on what he blesses with rather than thinking about what's missing 
It is how I start to live the abundant life. Number two, the second thing I need to believe is that God wants me to live, and this is going to sound uh, this is going to this going to sound very basic, but stay with me. I believe that that God wants me to live a believer's life. So I believe that God wants me to live an abundant life. I believe that God wants to give me an abundance and he wants to to fill my life up like a cup that's overflowing. And along with that, he wants me to live a believer's life. And what I mean by that is God wants me to live like I believe in him. Like I believe in his abundance. Like I, I trust in him. He wants me to live a believer's life. It, it starts with believing in Jesus for salvation. You know, Jesus promised us that if we believe in him, he will give us eternal life. Which, by the way, the word eternal is also an abundant word. A filled to the top and overflowing uh, word. Uh, we often think of eternal as long time but the word eternal also carries with it the idea of of a full life a a life lived to the full and jesus says i want you to believe in me to to experience to get eternal life but that's only where it starts i i start with believing in him and making a first time decision to believe in him and and taking a hold of that eternal life then he wants me to go from that starting point and begin to live a believer's life where i start to make decisions and choices and i start to respond to the world around me as a believer a believer that god will take care of me, a believer that God loves me, a believer that God is my Father who wants to bless me with an abundance. And, and one time Jesus, one time Jesus started yelling when he was preaching. Now as a pastor, I, I, I don't yell very often. Every once in a while I might get excited and passionate uh, I might, in the moment, sort of, sort of get excited, and or I might, I might yell for an example, uh, but I, I'm not really a yeller. You know, I'm not one of those guys. I, I feel more like let's have a conversation, and and let me give you a teaching, and and I'll let you sort of soak that in and think about it, make your decisions. I'm not, I'm not much of a yeller. And I don't know that Jesus was either. We're not told that he yelled very often. And we yell for different reasons. You know, we might yell at the dog, get over here. <laughs> we, might, we might yell at our kids when we're mad or frustrated. We might yell out of, out of a hurt. You know, we might stub our toe or, or smack our thumb with a hammer and we'll yell out in pain. We might yell when we're in a heated argument because we're trying to over uh, talk over the person that we're arguing with. We might yell because we're passionate about something and we're getting excited about something. Uh, we might yell and we might shout uh, because we're trying to make a point. And I think when Jesus yelled in this story that I'm going to read to you, or this teaching I'm going to read to you in just a moment, he was yelling, first off, so people would hear him. He was at the temple, and there were thousands and thousands of people there that he was trying to talk with and teach. So he had to yell to get their attention. I think he was yelling because he was passionate about what he was saying here. And I think he was yelling because he really wants us to hear what he's saying. I can't think of too many times in all of the Bible where we're told God yelled. Uh, but this time, Jesus yells. 
And here's what he yells. It makes me think, maybe I ought to listen. Maybe I ought to pay attention to what he's saying. And here's what he yells. In John chapter 7, verse 37 to 38, it says this. On the last day of the climax of the festival, there was a big festival in Jerusalem. Uh, Jesus stood and he shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. And Jesus yells that. He yells that over the crowds. He yells that into the pages of the Bible. And he yells that out of those pages to our ears. He says, if you're thirsty, come to me. And I will give you living waters from heaven. A river of blessing in your life. He shouts it. Everyone who believes in me will have a river flowing into their life. And that river will be a river of blessing from God. Everyone who believes, by the way, we, we need to focus in that Jesus is saying that river comes when you believe. That, that river comes when you believe in me, when you live as a believer. And one thing I notice about rivers, I love rivers, I love fishing, I love standing on the side of a river, I love getting in a boat and floating down a river, I, I love uh, going to big rivers, small rivers, I, I love rivers. And one thing I've noticed about a river is that a river's always flowing. A river, the water just keeps coming and coming and coming. If you could picture the blessings David talked about, you fill my cup to overflowing. And you picture taking a little cup and stuffing it down in a river, trying to pull that cup out with, with just a little water. You can't do it. If you've ever tried to fill a bucket in a flowing river, I mean a, a good a river with a good flow, you, you take that bucket in and, and it's hard not to pull that bucket out and, and for that bucket to be completely filled and, and splashing water all over. Sometimes it's hard to even hold that bucket in the water because the river's just flowing right into it. And that's what Jesus says. If you live as a believer... In me, you will have blessing of God flowing into your life. He's talking about the same thing David is talking about. And yet, sometimes we, sometimes we, even those of us who've made first time decisions and believe, Sometimes, as believers, we don't respond to life and live a believer's life. Now, let me say that one more time. Sometimes, as believers, we don't respond to life in a way that, that is a believer's life. What do I mean by that? Well... Sometimes things happen like I lose a job. Sometimes things happen like a relationship goes sour. Sometimes things happen like I miss an opportunity or I have a regret. Sometimes things happen and there's a, a challenge ahead of me. And rather than responding as a believer... I almost respond as if I don't believe that God wants to 
give me an abundant life. When I have an abundance mindset and I live as a believer, I, I lose my job and, and I know that God has one in store because because he he has an abundance and that that there uh, I can have this expectation to find the next one. When a relationship goes sour, I, I, I can trust in God that that he could send someone else into my life to to give me what I need and to bless me with a, a friendship or a relationship. When I lose an opportunity or, or miss an opportunity, I know that God has an abundance in store and there's another one on the way. I, I see God's abundance as a river that's always flowing and, and I respond to it with belief. I respond to the life I'm, I'm, I'm living with a belief. God is going to fill my cup to overflowing. The word believe here that he uses is a word that carries with it a couple of ideas. Sometimes we think of the idea of belief as as simply saying in our minds, I agree with some idea. I agree that Jesus died on the cross for my sins to forgive me. I I I I agree in my head. You know, I I have this I have this thought or I agree with this thought. But belief the word he uses here is a little bit more than that. It carries with it the idea of faith. Uh, faith where I have faith that Jesus is going to take care of me. I have faith that God really will provide this river of blessing. I have faith that not only Jesus will save me from my sins, but I will carry that faith into all the circumstances of my life, and I will live a, a believer's life, that he will guide me to eternal life, and in the meantime, he will guide me through and to an abundant life. And it carries with it an idea of trust. When I believe, I trust God. I trust Jesus to lead me. I trust Jesus enough to rely on Him in my life and to have a, a different mindset and a different outlook that if I put Him first in my life, He will give me all that I need and more that I can depend on Him. And what Jesus is saying here is if you believe in me, if you really believe in me, if you really have faith in me and trust in me, and if you really are connected to God through me, your connection to God will help you live in a way that says, you believe in me. And when we do that, we experience the overflowing life. A life filled with overflowing and endless supply of God's blessings. Do you live like you believe that God wants to fill you with blessings and goodness? Do you live like you believe that God is going to be good to you, that God is going to fill your cup up to overflowing? I might believe that Jesus will save me, but then trouble happens, struggle happens, disappointment happens, setbacks happen, and all of a sudden I, I, I act like I have lost faith and trust. I freak out. I get overwhelmed. I, I slip into absent mindset instead of an abundant mindset. Instead of talking like I believe God will lead me through this and God will bless me, I, I talk like my life is falling apart. Oh, I don't know, God, how how I'm going to get through this. I don't know how you're going to get me through this. I don't know, God, if you're going to even get me through this. I don't know, God, if you're going to even be good to me. And I begin to worry. Did you know that worry is actually the opposite of believing? Did you know that? That's one of the reasons that Jesus teaches us not to worry. 
Because worry is the opposite of believing God is going to take care of us. Worry is the opposite of believing that God can provide. Worry is the opposite of of expecting an abundant life, a, a cup filled up to overflowing, a river flowing of blessing into my life. Worry is just the opposite of that. Worry is where I say, God, I, I don't know if, if you are good enough. God, I don't know if, if you can bless me abundantly here. Worry is where I lose sight of what Jesus said would happen when I believe in him. And so what do I do? I decide to live a believer's life. Live a a believer's life that believes God's got me. God's got this situation. God's going to lead me through this. God's going to teach me. God's going to give me the wisdom I need to navigate this part of life. God's going to give me direction here. God's going to take care of my needs and and even more. God's going to give me all the grace I need. God's going to give me all his goodness I need. God's going to give me all the blessings I need no matter what happens, whether whether it's a setback at work or a setback to my health, whether it's a setback in a situation, whatever it is, I live a believer's life. God's going to give me all that I need. What do I want for my life? What do I want for your life? I want us to be filled with a river of God's goodness. That's what I want for you. That's what I want for me. I want to be able to to live a life filled with belief in Jesus. And I... I know I have learning to do. I I have I, I have times where I need to to turn something around. I need to start talking like a believer in every situation. I need to start I need to start believing and having an abundance mindset in every situation. To live a life filled with overflowing a connection that brings about an overflow of blessings rather than living a life filled with stress, anxiety, worry, or even a sense of of being overwhelmed. God wants to give me an overflowing life. A life overflowing with faith. A life overflowing with hope. And a life overflowing with joy and and overflowing with peace, and and overflowing with His goodness, a life overflowing with salvation and expectation that God's going to do something good today. That's what an overflowing life looks like. And so, I believe He wants me to have an abundant life, and I believe that He wants me to live a believer's life And that leads me to the next one. In this connection, if I want to live an overflowing life, I believe that God wants me to live a follower's life. I want to say something very basic again. It's very basic, but it's also incredibly important. Are you ready? A follower follows. <laughs> a follower follows. And God wants me to be his follower. Jesus invited people, follow me. The One of the names for the followers of Jesus is disciple And what a disciple is, is a student who follows a teacher. He wants us to follow him. 
When he leads, he wants us to follow him. And if we want to experience an abundant life, if we want to experience the river of blessing that he wants us to experience, I need to follow God to that abundance. I need to follow Jesus into that abundance. God describes himself as a good God. He's a God who will be incredibly good to us. And he tells us that he will lead us into what is good, that he will teach us what is good, and he just wants us to follow him so we experience what is good in our life. Listen to how God describes himself in Isaiah chapter 48 to those who were following him. In Isaiah 48, verse 17, God says this. uh, He says it to the people of Israel. This is what the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, says. I am the Lord your God. In other words, I'm the leader and you're the follower. I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is good for you and leads you along the paths you should follow. And and here's the thing. If, If I believe God wants to fill my cup to overflowing. And if I believe Jesus wants me to experience an abundant life and he wants me to believe in him so that I can experience a river of his blessings in my life, I'm going to follow him. <laughs> I'm going to follow him so that I can so that I can receive all these things he wants to give me. But then look at what he says in verse 18. In Isaiah 48, 18, he said, God says, Oh, that you had just listened to my commands. Then you would have had peace flowing like a river and a righteousness rolling over you like the waves of the sea. There's more of that imagery, rivers and and water and big waves flowing in the sea. And did you notice what he said there? He said, listen, I teach you for your good. I'm leading you in the direction I want to lead you for your good so that you can experience my goodness, so that you can experience the, the blessing and the overflowing life and the river from heaven i teach you for your own good i give you commands for your own good god doesn't teach us (laughs) just to make life hard on us he doesn't teach us to lead us into a life that's going to be more difficult and more broken he teaches us for our good he's not going to lead us down wrong paths And here's the thing. This is where we come to that very basic thought, but very powerful one. Are you ready? Write it down. Say it out loud. When I follow God, I follow Him. (laughs) I follow Him. I follow his leading. I follow his teachings. I I follow his word, his commandments, his scripture. I follow the Bible, which is the word we use for all those things. Sometimes people, even Christian people, will say, how come I don't feel like my life is overflowing? How come I don't? feel like I'm experiencing the abundant life. How how come (laughs) I don't feel like I have a river of blessing coming my way? And the first thing we should ask ourselves is, in those moments, am I following him? Really? Is there something he's told me not to do that I'm doing? Is Is there something that he's told me to do that... 
I'm not doing? Am I following him to these blessings? Am I following him to the abundant life? So often, life can be filled with with hardship and problems and stress and unnecessary issues because we're not following. What God is saying to these people and what he's saying to us sometimes here today is if you would just follow my word, if you would just take it in and follow what I'm telling you, you would have experienced the the river of blessing, the, the waves of the ocean crashing as blessings in your life. And do you notice a connection here? There is a very important connection between me following and me experiencing the abundant life. There's an important connection between me following and living as a believer who follows and the blessings that God wants to give. If He is my Savior, my Messiah, the Lord, my God, which that alone is a reminder that He's the Lord, my God, I'm not the Lord, my God, that He is my leader, my shepherd, my good God, my heavenly Father who wants to teach me. And when He teaches me and leads me, it's all for my good. If I really believe that, I'll follow. He says to us, how I wish you followed my teachings. Listen, if you would just treat your body the way I tell you to treat it, it would be good for you. And and there's blessings in that. If you would just treat your family the way I tell you to treat them, It'll be for your own good. Everything I teach you, it's, it's for your good. If you would just teach your, treat your spouse the way that I, I teach you to treat them in my word, it'll be for your good. If you would just treat your identity the way I taught you to treat it, it will be for your good. If you would just treat sin the way that I I teach you to treat it, it's for your good, for your blessings. If you would just treat marriage the way I teach you to treat it in my word, it's all for your good. If you would just treat sex the way that I teach you to treat it, it's for your good, it's for your blessing. It's for the blessing of your family. It's for the blessing of your marriages, for the blessing of your future marriage. If you just treat it the way I teach you, it's all for your good. If you would just treat your finances and your money the the way I treat you to teach it, it's for your good. (laughs) And every time, every time we don't listen to God, Every time we don't follow, we just mess it up. We, we, just, we just mess up our lives and, and mess up those areas of our lives because we didn't follow. We, we misuse the, the blessings of God. We, we pervert the things of God. We, we, we mess up the good gifts that God gives and God will say, I just wish you listened to my commands. You would have experienced so much blessing. And we say to God in those areas, we say sometimes, well, you know what, God, I think I'll just do this one my own way. I think I'll just make my own decision and, and, and let my will be done rather than your will be done. You know what that's called? That's called not following. <laughs> And when we do our own thing, our own way, so often, it doesn't lead to an abundant life. It leads to a more broken one. 
It, it leads to a more lacking one. It leads to the 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 absence mindset. It leads to stress and 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 prob more problems and and more heartache and more heartbreak and and more regret. And, and God just says, "Listen, if you would just follow my teachings." And here's the thing: whenever we don't follow God, in that moment, we doubt that God really is a good God. Every time, every time God says, go here, and we decide we're going to go there. Every time God says, do this, and we decide we're going to do that. And every time God says, don't do this, and we decide we're going to do it, uh, we're doubting whether God's way is actually better. We're, we're doubting whether he's going to really be good to me and bless me abundantly and send rivers of blessing my way and, 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 and crash blessings over me like, like waves of the ocean. We're doubting that. Because we think we're going to be happier if, if we make our decision. And if we, we think we're going to be happier if, if we don't follow. And I don't follow. And I doubt God. And I doubt that God knows how to make me happier than I do. But here's the thing. God knows how to bring happiness and joy and goodness and blessing into your life, even when you don't. And he says, follow me. Let me teach you for your good. Follow me, and I will bring you to an overflowing life, an abundant life, and I'll bring a river of blessings into your life. God says to these people in this passage, how I wish, how I wish you had just listened and followed my commands. God wants you to experience his goodness. He wants you to, to succeed and achieve the, the life that he imagined for you, the, the life and the purpose that he has in store for you. He wants you to experience that. But to do that, we have to believe that we need to live a, a follower's life. I go from I, I go from leading myself to now God leads me. I, I listen to his commands and I, I listen to his teaching. And, and let me share with you something that people who have this overflowing connection and experience this abundant life do regularly. It's very basic. They regularly listen to God. They regularly listen as he teaches them. They, they regularly listen to him and, and they follow his teaching. It's very simple. They read the Bible regularly. That's how we listen to him, by the way. I don't know if you knew that, but it says in Scripture that all Scripture is God-breathed. The Bible is actually spoken by God. It, it, the Bible, when you open it up, it's not just the words that were written by some human hand, some pen. It is not just print on a page. It is the very words of God himself. And when you open the Bible regularly and you have a, a personal quiet time where you, you read it 5, 10, 15 minutes a day and, and you just say, God, what do you want to say to me? What do you want to teach me today? What do you want me to do today? Where do you want to lead me today? They, they do that regularly, people who experience the abundance of God. People who experience this overflowing connection. You might say, well, I, I don't know where to start reading. I, I'd like to do that, but where do I start? And I would just say, if you haven't ever... If, if you haven't ever had a time where you're just saying, I'm getting into God's Word every day, uh, and you don't know where to start, I'll give you two two options. Start in the book of Matthew. Just start reading it. The book of Matthew is in the New Testament. It's the very first book. It's easy to find. It's the first book in the New Testament in your Bible. Just start reading it. And... And read a little bit every day. Pick up every day where you left off. If you skip a day or miss a day, just pick up where you left off the next time you get into it and just start reading. Read about what Jesus said. Read about what Jesus did. Read about the story of his life and his ministry. And every time you come to a place where God's teaching you, 
Say, God, what do you want? What do you want me to do with what you're teaching me? How do you want me to apply this to today? Just start in the book of Matthew or start in the book of John, which is also one of the first four books of the Bible, uh, you could, uh, which are called the Gospels. You could jump into the book of John, which is a great place to start and just, again, read about the story and the teachings and the coming of Christ. Get to know him. Make a connection with him. And start to follow him. It's really hard to follow when we don't know where he's leading. And if you're not in the word regularly, if you're not in the Bible regularly, you're missing out on his teaching. You can almost hear him say, oh, how I wish you followed my commands. Well, he wants you to follow his commands so that he can bless you for your good and, and, and when you start to follow him like that, you'll start to experience this abundant life we're talking about. He says, you follow me, I'll give you an overflowing life. And, and what's this overflowing life look like? Well, it starts with this overflowing connection to God, where he brings us this abundance of of blessings, this abundance of salvation, this abundance of hope, this abundance into our life through this connection we have through God through Jesus Christ. A connection that says, God, I believe. I believe you want me to have an abundant life. I believe you want me to live and respond to life like a believer. And I believe you want me to follow you. And so, God, I'll follow. That's the abundant life. That's where it begins. That's this overflowing life. That's where it starts. Will you join me now and pray with me? And let's let's just invite God to bring us on this journey to experience what the overflowing life looks like. Let's pray. Father in heaven, uh, I, I just pray for those who are joining me here today that you will help each one, <coughs> excuse me, to experience an overflowing life, a life just overflowing with your blessing, a, a life a life filled with you to overflowing. God, I pray that you will help us as we go through this series together that we will learn what it means to experience the abundant life, to, to, live, to live the overflowing life. I pray that you will help us, Father, because we don't always live with the abundant mindset. We don't always we don't always respond to life as believers. We all have growing to do. And we don't always follow. <laughs> and God, we know that you give us grace and you forgive us. And you give us a chance to start over every time we fail. And so, God, we pray that you will help us from here on out, from today. Every day. We'll just take it one day at a time to to follow you and experience the abundance of blessings you have in store. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said together, amen. Well, I'd like to invite you to finish up our teaching time today by declaring it's been a great day. On the count of three, we're going to yell out, it's been a great day, because it's been a great day in God's word together, and it's been a great day, uh, and hopefully it continues to be a great day and a great week as you seek his word uh, and and look to experience the abundant life. You ready? One, two, three. It's been a great day. I hope you have a great day and a great week. And I look forward to seeing you next Sunday.